surprisingly human. It's a basic instinct for humans to want to share their lives with animals. They can provide comfort and companionship. But for some people, the desire to live with another species can take them into obsessive and dangerous territory, sharing their homes with animals that are best left in the wild. Reptiles are ancient creatures, remarkable predators whose toxic venom and speed of attack gives them a powerful fascination. But what dangerous mix of obsession, loneliness, and desire causes these people to cross the barrier between the reptile and their prey? Living with animals that have the potential to kill. One day Ron came to work, was blood on his shirt that he claimed to be from the tail of his cat. It was one of the scenes that uh, is sort of reminiscent of a, of a homicide. Part of his facial region had been consumed. The wound had been cleaned out, but you could actually see the flesh within the thumb. There was a lot of people who thought the guy was just nuts because they really didn't know him. They just knew what he did. Ron Huff was 42 years old, an ex-soldier who had previously worked in military intelligence. like he was uh, quite the shape, especially for his age. It was 41 when I met him, and he was in excellent condition. He had said that he could bench press about 400 pounds, and he worked out rigorously. In fact, he had a diet that was commensurate to, to keeping a very, very strong build and a very small amount of body fat. Ron Huff lived alone in a small studio apartment in the suburbs of Newark, Delaware. Few people even knew he was there. I'd call Ron an acquaintance. You know, he was a neighbor. Um, you know, we'd have just, you know, little neighborly talks at the mailbox, whatnot. If Ron was, uh, you know, disturbed by a neighbor making too much noise in their apartment with their loud music, he would go down to the basement utility room and just shut their power off to their apartment. And that would usually, you know, stop the Friday and Saturday night parties. Ron Huff would let nothing distract him from his obsessive daily routine. He divided his time between his home and his work at a car lot in downtown Newark. He just looked like the type of guy that lived a very comfortable, relaxed life, not a conformist at all society, but more of a guy that just lived life the way he wanted to live life. He was quick to smile and quick to, to joke or be friendly, but Ron would not initiate conversations with people much the, the way an average person would. He, um, he kept to himself. How are you doing? Oh, fantastic. And how about your little friends at the house there? How are they? Huff didn't easily let others into his life, but his neighbor, Jeff Wildonger, was one of the few who came to understand that Huff's passion wasn't people, but animals. We were down at the mailboxes, and he was mentioning that he had a collection of, of lizards, and 
wanted to know if you know I was interested in seeing them and I uh, went down there thinking that you know these lizards would be small and in, in cages and in fact they were you know six seven feet long and had free reign of the apartment. Ron Huff had converted his whole studio apartment into a giant lizard cage. As a healthy temperature for a lizard is 80 degrees, Huff had heated up his home for the benefit of his pets. It was um, organized mayhem, if you would. Um, you know, there was a lot of stuff in a small area. It, it was honestly a little intimidating. The first time I was there, he was feeding them raw chicken. And I was standing there wearing shorts, and he told me to stand still as they were licking my ankles so that I didn't threaten them. Um, it was just a really bizarre situation. Will Donger also noticed that the animals that had taken over Huff's home appeared to be somewhat out of control. He did have problems with, with lizards fighting in his house. The larger ones would attack the smaller ones. He had a cat. The cat had been attacked several times. Uh, the cat had a very large scar on his back, hind quarters, from one of these lizards. But for Huff, it appeared that any injury was just an everyday part of living with his reptiles. One day, Ron walked up to us and said, you had asked me once if I was ever bitten. He could actually pull one part of his flesh away oh, from the other. Dear God. We had known that the monitors had injured his cat. Now we see the wound on his thumb, and we thought, maybe this isn't such a good situation. Maybe he doesn't have quite the control that he thinks he has over these lizards. And we became, we became concerned because we didn't want him to become further injured. Keep calling me lizard boy. Everybody's gonna know that. Ron's love of animals completed his life. All right, and I'm up there for me. He's very committed to being there when he needed to be there, uh, being home when he needed to be home, and um, taking good care of him. Slowly, the animal gets weaker, and the dragon waits. It's a reptile. It has all the time in the world. Ron Huff had made a decision how he was going to live his life. He would devote himself to his work, his body, and his beloved animals. The dragons move in and finish it off. One day, we expected Ron to come to work at 9 o'clock a.m and we didn't receive a phone call by 20 after 9. We figured, well, possibly, you know, he's, he's ill, and we knew that he didn't have a phone. So the rest of the day went by, and we had never heard from Ron at all. The following day, we sent an employee to his apartment to see if Ron was okay, to check on Ron. We could hear a TV. And there was, there was no answer. The day came and went and still no one had heard anything from Ron Huff. I had come home with my roommate and I, we were out at the uh, local tavern, and uh, could smell something unusual in the bathroom. And in this apartment building, the, the pipes ran up the central wall, so, uh, the smell from Ron's apartment was coming up this hollow wall into our bathroom, and I had thought it at first was a, a broken sore pipe. The next morning, I discovered where the smell was actually coming from. It had been three days since work colleagues or family had heard from Ron Huff. 
such behavior was completely out of character for such a conscientious man. The next day, his family called concerned because they also had not heard from Ron. So we called the police. 